In 1901, the stage was set for a dramatic change in U.S. coinage. President William McKinley was assassinated. Vice President Theodore Roosevelt took over as president. Now, the interesting thing about Theodore Roosevelt is he was an avid numismatic collector of coins. He currently didn't like the state of U.S. coinage. He felt that it didn't show the glory and the capability of an American artist. And he took it upon himself during his presidency to change the U.S. coinage to something that was worthy of being called American. In 1907, President Theodore Roosevelt commissioned Augustus St. Gaulden to redesign the double eagle, which is the $20 gold piece, and the eagle, which is the $10 gold piece. Now, President Roosevelt loved these so much after they were redone that he wanted to also redesign the half eagle, which is the $5 gold piece, and the quarter eagle, which is the $2.50 gold piece. Roosevelt was really gung-ho about the half and the quarter eagle because the design that had been used previously, which was the Liberty Head had been around for some 60 odd years with no changes at all to it. Now the story on how Theodore Roosevelt found the sculptor for the half and quarter eagle Indian head uh, gold coin piece is kind of interesting. Theodore Roosevelt had a friend in Boston. His name was Dr. William Bigelow. Dr. William Bigelow also wanted American coinage to improve because he was a numismatic collector too. He had a friend who was a sculptor and he introduced him to Theodore Roosevelt. This sculptor's name was Bella Lyon Pratt, who was the designer of the obverse and the reverse of the half and quarter eagle gold coin. Bella Pratt wanted the half and the quarter eagle to have a very unique design, and so did Theodore Roosevelt. Pratt looked at uh, St. Gaudens' $10 eagle piece with the uh, Native American image on the obverse. He really liked that, but St. Gaudens actually used Liberty and put a Native American headdress on it. What Pratt wanted to do is he wanted to use a real Native American image on the verse of his coin. And he also wanted to incorporate an incus design into the coin too. An incus design means that the portrait and also the lettering are sunk down into the coin and there are no raised rims around it. This was a very revolutionary design for its time and it's the only American coin that has fully incorporated an incus design. The specifics of Bella Pratt's half and quarter eagle are as such. The actual content of gold and copper are both the same in the half and the quarter eagle. That's 90% gold, 10% copper. The 250 piece or the quarter eagle weighs 4.18 grams and has a reeded edge. The half eagle weighs 8.35 grams and has a reeded edge. Sculptor Bella Pratt did an outstanding job on the quarter and half eagle Indian head uh, piece. Uh, personally, it's my second most favorite coin that the U.S. Mint has ever produced. The Incus design just, you know, is revolutionary and you don't see anything else produced by the Mint that looks like this. Now let's actually talk about some of the details on the obverse and the reverse of the coin. On the obverse, you'll see a Native American in war headdress. At the bottom is the date that the coin was minted. 13 stars glorify the edge of the coin, representing the original 13 colonies. Now the motto Liberty is on the outskirts of the coin at the top. The reverse of the half and the quarter eagle have an eagle perched on arrows and olive branches. Now the eagle that Pratt used was based on the eagle from the uh, $10 Indian head piece that say Golden had made. So if you look at the two, they look quite similar. The mint mark for the reverse is located on the bottom corner along with on the very bottom will be printed the denomination five for $2.50. You will also see United States of America at the top of the coin within God We Trust on the side along with the other motto. In 1908, the half and the quarter eagle Indian head coin was released to the public. Now the public being who they are, they didn't like the coin. There were lots of rumors spread about the coin. One of them was that the coins wouldn't stack properly because of the NQ's design, which is total nonsense. A dealer in Philadelphia by the name of Samuel H. Chapman spread lots of rumors about the coin. The two 
Most known ones were the fact that the coin could be counterfeited easily because of the Incuse design and would bankrupt the government. The second rumor was that the Incuse design could hold dirt and diseases and make people sick. So in turn, all these rumors and all the negative publicity about the coin drove collectors away. And that's why we don't have as many as we normally would because no one collected them. The half eagle and the quarter eagle gold coins were minted in the Philadelphia Mint, the San Francisco Mint, the uh, New Orleans Mint, and the Denver Mint. Now the quarter eagles were made from 1908 until 1915 and then 1925 until 1929. The half eagles were made from 1908 to 1916 and then they were made again in the year 1929. Now minting totally stopped on the half and quarter eagles in 1929 because of the stock market crash. The half and quarter eagle have regained popularity today, not only because of the beautiful design of the coins, but the fact that they are the easiest to collect in a series with only a few key dates that are in between. The Quarter Eagle Indian Head only contains 15 coins in the entire series. 12 are from the Philadelphia Mint and 3 are from the Denver Mint. And there's only 2 that are considered key dates. That's the 1911 Denver and the 1914 Philadelphia, which is the second key date. Now the Half Eagle has 24 coins in its series with only a few key dates. The 1909 New Orleans Mint, which is a relatively high, uh, high key date to find, and the 1929. And the 1929 is so high because a lot of these were melted down and none of them were used, so there are only a few out there. One thing to note about the half and quarter eagle is the Incuse design actually makes these two coins the most difficult U.S. coin to grade. Now, there were several matte proof coins created during both of these series during their lifetime. The only thing is, not that many people collected them, so most of them were melted down. So any matte proofs now are just worth an absolute small fortune. Now let's actually take a moment and talk about collecting quarter and half eagle Indian head coins. Now if you're collecting for an investment, let's say you're just wanting big investment money, you're going to want to go for the key dates. Now in the quarter eagle, that's going to be the 1911D or the 1914 uh, Philadelphia Mint or even the 1914 Denver Mint. In half eagles, your investment opportunity is going to be in the high end key dates and those are 1909 New Orleans, the 1911 Denver Mint, the 1908 San Francisco Mint and of course the 1929 Philadelphia Mint because even though there was a pretty high mintage on those most of those were melted down so it's a very rare coin now and if you can find one a 1929 is definitely the way to go. Now if you're a major collector and you just like collecting coins but you also want to invest in them you might want to do this with the series because I do enjoy the quarter and half eagle series it's a very beautiful series and some of the key dates especially in men's date can be thousands if not tens and twenties and thirties of thousands of dollars. If you're going to go with a key date, uh, I would probably go with something below a mint state so you can actually afford it. Now, let's start this out by saying, you know, you just want to go with commons. Because starting your series, I normally start out with the common dates before I start going after ones that are more expensive. I have some coins here that are courtesy of uh, Atmex, that's American Precious uh, Metals Exchange, and they sent these over and we're filming for the show. And I have here some Mint State 62 and 63 half and quarter eagles. If you're gonna buy commons, definitely Mint State 62, Mint State 63. Those are the areas you want to stay in because they're not going to be so expensive you can't afford them and they're not going to be so low grade you won't want to really look at them. So we have here, we've got a 1912 Half Eagle. It's a very beautiful coin in an NGC holder. We also have a 1925D and a 1909D. Now if you don't want to go with a Mint State type coin and you want to collect these but you think the Mint State's a little too pricey for you, you want to go with something below that and that's going to be an AU or below. And most most of these are raw coins because they're not slapped. It's really hard pressed to find a common date half or quarter eagle Indian head that is an AU conditioner below that's slapped unless it's a key date or something of like that. We have several here from Admex. We have a 1909 Denver Mint AU half eagle, a 1911 half eagle, and a 1908 quarter and a 1915 quarter eagle. These are all raw coins, but let me tell you, Admex does a good job on grading them. You're not going 
to be surprised by getting something that's not graded correctly, like happens with sometimes with companies when you buy wrong coins. So I state my reputation on Abmex grading because they're very good at what they do. Well guys, we've covered a lot of information in this video. We've talked about the quarter and half eagle Indian head gold coin. We've talked about the history behind the coin. We've talked about the politics, all the stuff with Teddy Roosevelt and his whole adventure in changing US coinage. That's why I love the uh, turn of the century, 1900s type era because so many fascinating and beautiful things happened to American coinage, but it was just great to discuss all this stuff with you. I'd also like to thank um, Abmex for sending these coins over courtesy to be filmed for the show. They've given me a nice little coupon code right here too. So if you order anything from their website, uh, $50 or over, enter this code and it will give you a percentage off of your purchase. So definitely use this code, it's worth it. I love Apex, they're a great company, purchased from them many a times, they're awesome. So I'd like to thank them for sending these guys over because it really helps out the show. Well guys, in the next episode of Spare Change, we're gonna be talking about the American Silver Eagle Bullion Coin, which is gonna be a fun and fascinating one to discuss. But until then, I'm Mark Absalon, and keep checking your pocket change because you never know what you might find in your spare change.